What up everyone, Zona right here coming at you with another episode of the Zono podcast every Sunday guys. I'm recording this and posting it straight up to my YouTube. I hope you guys have been enjoying. If you have any uh, topic that you want me to uh, talk about for next week, feel free to send me a tweet or po post it in the comment down below. Um, it's been really great and I've really been enjoying this format where I can just talk and express myself on, express myself, that was like some weird accent but... It's just like, yeah, I've been really enjoying this format, and I really want to make it like a weekly thing. I've told you guys that I wanted to have some guests. I really do. Like, I really want to have some guests, but I'm not getting luck at all. Like, every time I get someone, um, they say, yeah, like, I'm excited. I'll talk about this. I'll talk about that. And when the day comes, they just don't show up, or they don't even, like, say me, tell me why or what happened. So, it is a new show. It doesn't have a lot of views, so there's not a lot of incentive for them to come. But I'm going to try, I'm going to try, and hopefully one day we can have like a little guest to present his like, his company, or his project, or his organization, or whatever it is, whatever the case may be, uh, so we can have like a conversation, and we can learn from him, or her, uh, and hopefully we can learn some new stuff about the gaming and esports industry. So today guys, in this episode, it's not going to be a long episode, definitely, because I don't have a lot to talk about. I just want to come back into World Championship, how is it going, we're going to go over the group, and we're going to see how it goes after three days of words, or four days, I'm not sure actually. Uh, it's been hard to follow, obviously words have been really, really hard to follow uh, since um, they're... The, the event is taking place in China, so the time difference for me is hitting hard. The first match starts at midnight, so obviously I can watch the first one, the second one, half of the third one, but then, like, I gotta go to bed. Like, I can't just go to bed at, like, 4 a.m. That's that's too bad, but it's it's alright, because I know that a lot of Chinese people, a lot of people in Asia are enjoying uh, League of Legends, and the audience must be absolutely crazy there. So, in this podcast, I want to talk about words. I want to talk about the group, A, B, and C, and D, to see what's going on, what are the surprises, what do you guys want me to talk about, uh, what, what do I think about my predictions uh, so far, and I want to talk about PUBG a little bit. I think this is a very, uh, it's still a super interesting topic, to be honest. Uh, let me just drink some water. Mm. PUBG is really, really, really interesting. They announced the IEM uh, Oakland uh, in Intentional, which I'm going to try to qualify as the most random team ever. Like, we're talking, I'm talking about it with my friends. Uh, I don't know if this is going to happen. I don't know if this is going to happen, but I will for sure be at IEM Oakland. So if you guys are going to go there, um, let me know. Let me know. Maybe we can meet up. Maybe we can do something together. But I, sh I should be there with some friends, and I should I will probably enjoy more the PUBG section than the CSGO section. But we'll talk about this later. Let's start with words, guys. So, let me just check the schedule. I just want to see the schedule, and I'm going to show you what happened. So, wait, let me just show you here. Left monitor. Let's kick this shit out. So, I'm going to... Let's just leave the camera. This is the camera I use for PUBG, but it's okay. Let's just leave it there. It's, it's fine as it is, right? So... We had four days of words. I'm not going to come back on every matches, but I want to say that those words have been really, really interesting, it's especially the day two. Um, so this match was insane, HQ against Cloud9, but there's another match that was insane. That was this one, Cloud9 against Edward Gaming. So Cloud9 for me is one of the biggest surprises words. It's absolutely insane how clean they are. For some reason, they are really good. Uh, their gameplay is so, it's not different from the regular season, but it's just cleaner. Like, I feel like, w there's like, when I watch NLCS, I feel like there's a lot of hesitation in the gameplay of Con 9. Like, they're, they're, their number one default, like, their number one, like, takedown is really the fact that they're not decisive enough. It's that, like, they cannot com come into a call really well, and... There, I'm seeing so much progress in the words that it's really insane. Obviously, guys, this match, I only watch highlights because, as you can see here on my time zone, it was at 5 a.m. But from what I saw of Klein and doing it against Edward Gaming, which is, like, surprisingly at 0-3, which is a bit awkward, to be honest, it is it is what it is. And it is, understanding, it is really interesting to see how they won and how sometimes, like... A team from NA can have such good surprises. So they're 2-1, just like TSM 2-1. Uh, and so far, they're doing really, really well. 
So right now, let's just take the teams in standing. If you guys want to go back to some matches, I would really uh, advise you to, to watch those matches. So I would advise you to watch... Um, I would advise you to watch um, uh, uh, this match wasn't really good. Fnatic is very disappointing, unfortunately. Like I, I've placed so much hope on them. They're not, oof, sorry, they're not doing super well. And AHQ against Edward Gaming was a really good game. Cloud9 against SKT21. It is good to see this game just for the sake of it because it is interesting to see how. Kleinan loses and what are their weaknesses against the, the world champions, like the most likely to be worst champions. Uh, here, I advise you to watch ADG against SKT. It's a great match. Uh, TSM Flash Wolves, great match as well. I got to see this one at midnight. That was great. But whatever. Let's just get to the team, teams in standing. So the group A, guys, is the group A for me where Kleinan was going to be at bottom and that's it. And maybe SKT T1, Edward Gaming would have passed. HQ could have taken down Edward Gaming. Uh, that was my prediction. And it turns out that it's not over, right? It's not over. We'll still have, like, so many days of work. So that's not over. But right now, midway through the group stage, we have Cloud9 at 2-1. At 2-1 at second place. They won against Edward Gaming. They won against AHQ once. And they lost against SKT. Let me just turn off my phone. This is so surprising. SKT 2-1, okay, 3-0, easy peasy. Nothing to say. Clean as fuck. Um, they're really good. I mean... Do we have to say anything about SKT T1 at this point? But just Clan 9 coming in clutch at 2-1. So, in the match against Edor Gaming, they were super clean. I think that their draft was absolutely insane. But it's especially what they did in the very early games. I feel like when you play against Chinese teams or Korean teams, and you get something, like if you get this little advantage in early game, like a first blood, first turret, first dragon, stuff like this, and you keep a like, you keep, like, a, a small growth in advantage. If you plateau, you're going to lose. But if you keep a growth in advantage, like, if you never have your time to breathe, if you're always somewhere doing something, then that's how you win. Edward Gaming could never had really this opportunity to come back. And it was so interesting to see because Kyle was, like, dominating. I, w I don't want to say they dominated throughout the match, but it's pretty much what happened. Uh, and... They were super smart in their decision and on their team fight. Uh, really, really cool, really, really cool performance. So, Clan Island, props to them for this mid um, group stage. I really hope they stay. Obviously, I want to see the most NA and EU uh, teams out of group stage because those are the rarest times. Um, Clan Island can do it. They can do it. They showed us against AHQ, they showed us against Edward Gaming. If they can learn a bit more from SKTT1, like from their match, if they can watch the replays and see what they did wrong they can possibly get the number two slot and do a group stage maybe against like immortals or maybe against like um uh, maybe long or something like they can probably do a best of three or best of five i'm not sure what it is for the group b guys that was my biggest risk in my pick and video which i got a lot of hate for uh, like a lot of hate for but this video did surprisingly well compared to my other videos so you know what that's I'll just take it. I don't really care about, like, criticism. But Fnatic is 0-3, guys. And this makes me so sad. This makes me so sad because it is a team that, I don't know, after the UN, ULCS finals this year, I was like, bro, I want to see them succeed so bad. Like, Reckless is such a talented player. Um, Broxa, all those people, like, they're insane. And Fnatic came back from literally the ground up because once the All-Star left, once everyone left, and... And they had to build a roster around Reckless. Uh, and Soas came back and all that stuff. Like, It was hard for them to come back. Like, Fnatic was at a point where they were at a 12-0 split. Or something like 17-0 split. Where they had like zero def uh, defeat. And they just lost one game in the best of five in the finals. Which was like absolutely insane in the records. To losing most of their players and doing bad. To coming back and being at words. So, and securing third place at EULCS, at EULCS for the summer split, 2017. So, seeing them losing against Immortals was hard to watch. Like, it was hard to watch because Immortals is literally the easiest opponent in this group B, to my opinion. In my opinion, sorry. To my opinion, is not English. Uh, Gigabytes Marines, super impressive games, uh, very talented players. I just think that their team execution is very blurry like it's hard for 
it's hard to analyze their gameplay because it's very blurry. It feels almost like a solo queue game sometimes. And Longzu Gaming. So Longzu Gaming, I got a lot. Of, like if you go on my ping and they say, oh, this guy it says Longzu Gaming. For me, Longzu Gaming, of course they're gonna go. Of course they're gonna be number one at this group. But where's the fun of saying they will? Like, like I just wanted to see Fnatic succeed and crush everyone and be the surprise of this world, so we can have like an amazing event, full entertainment, full surprises. Because this is what League of Legends is about. It's about having the same weapons as your opponent and just making a surprise and winning. And for me, this is what I want to see. I wish I could have seen Fnatic at, at 3-0, Lungzu at 2-1, just like I, we're seeing with Clan 9 right now. Clan 9 is making a surprise, and everyone, everyone is hyped about it. I wish it was the same for Fnatic, that's it. Obviously, Lungzu Gaming is probably the most likely to win the World Championship. It's We're probably going to see a SKTT1 Lungzu Gaming Finals, or I think it's going to be a semi-final, at least because it's Group A versus Group B, usually. Uh, so... We'll see. I'm just saying, Fnatic, very disappointing. Like, not so much to say, to be honest. Like, very, very, very bad like, mistakes all throughout the games. Reckless, always impeccable in his laning phase, in his farming, in everything. But it is just not enough. It's not enough when you play against the best teams in the world. It is just not enough. Moving on to Group C, guys. World Never Give Up, Samsung Galaxy, G2 Esports, and 1907 uh, Fenerbahce Esports. Not a surprise. Um, I feel like this is what I predicted. But this is the this is mid... Um, this is halfway through the group stages. That's what I'm trying to say. So right now, I'm not doing like a recap or anything. I'm just saying what's going on right now. World Never Give Up, number one. F Samsung Galaxy, 2-1. G2 Esports, third. 1907. CO3, what I was expecting to be honest, not a lot of surprise for Group C, unfortunately. Group D, we got we got our champion TSM, which I thought was gonna crush everyone, and TSM ended up losing against who again? I forgot, I forgot who did they lose again? I think it was the um, TSM, TSM, where you at, boy? Uh, TSM, TSM lost yesterday against Misfits. Okay, interesting guys. Like honestly, losing as Misfits. I mean, they didn't like they lost, but they're still like two one each, right? Uh, I think Misfit lost against Flash Wolves. Oh no, against Team WE. It is. I don't know TSM for me. Like, they look really. They didn't look really good in the first win. It was very sloppy. It was a sloppy performance. Nothing crazy. Nothing TSM like. Second game was so much more clean, like, the execution was perfect almost, um, NDD, the, the CEO of TSM, the president, whatever, founder, he said that the performance was so much clearer and everything was going into place, um, I want to believe in that, but the third game against Misfits was such a surprise, uh, to my results, like, I was like, oh my god, they just lost to Misfits, like, really? Um, it is... It is very surprising, but it is it is what it is. Like it is the World Championship. This is full of surprises. TSM against against Misfit. This is super bad though, because I feel like it it can hurt. Like this is the game that just happened, right? Tomorrow they're probably gonna play another team um, than Misfits. Let's see who they play. So they're not playing tomorrow. Uh, they're not playing the next day. They're gonna play against Team WE, so they already won against, and then they're gonna play against. Dude, where where is all the? I did Dom playing Flash Wolf suddenly. Wait, Immortals is playing three. Oh my God, what the hell is that? Okay, okay, I see now. I see what's happening. So yeah, here we go. TSM has a three match in one day. So this is gonna be super interesting to see, like 10 p.m., 12 p.m., 1 a.m. So they start by playing Team W, who they won. Then they go back to Misfits. Then they go to Flash Wolf instantly after. Uh, this is gonna be a hard two hours for TSM right here. I don't know. I feel like what I was trying to say is that losing to Misfits can really hurt your confidence as a gamer, and. They are usually really sensitive to that. Like when you play against someone, when you lose against someone that is worse than you in stats, it's hard for your morale. And it's so hard sometimes for some players to get back in on track. Uh, I hopefully, they, like, I'm not saying Misfit sucks, but I'm just saying it's really weird for TSM to lose against that caliber of team. Um, TSM should, should have been 3 0 in this group, for, to be honest. 
But I'm not going to talk about the performance because I really haven't seen all their matches. Uh, again, it's so hard for me to keep up because it's so, so late at night. And I can watch as much as highlights as I can. Uh, the highlights give you the kills, they give you the fancy shit, but it's 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 not really good. Watching a full game is really good just to understand the macro game and to see what they're doing. Because the highlights is probably the kill, the double kill, the pentakills, the, the the baron, the stuff like that. But it is hard for me to have a cons like a really thought out analysis of the group. So right now that's what's happening. I think I'm most surprised by group A. No surprise for group B, unfortunately. Fnatic didn't really make it. Uh, they can still go 3-3, but I don't think they'll make it out of group stage, to be honest. Um, group C, not a good surprise. This is really what I expected. And Group D, I would have expected TSM at rank 1 alone at 3-0. But I guess it's okay since Team WE and Misfits are at 2-1 as well. Flash Wolves being at 0-3, I'm pretty sure they're not going to make it, uh, even if they reach 3-3 three, three, uh, for their group stage. So words guys, after I talked about this, I want to talk about the viewership and what's actually happening. Obviously guys, what I'm going to talk about is, it is to know that the World Championship is happening in China and that it's hard for NA, NA people to watch it. Because the first match in the West Coast is at uh, 12 a.m., so midnight. So it means that in New York... In New York, uh, in New York, it's like I don't wait. It's like three hours more, so it's like three a.m. for the first match, which is not bearable. Nobody can see that. So maybe you can see the first match with your breakfast at like seven at a.m., but again, that's absolutely insane. Like nobody's gonna wake up that early. Uh, I'm not sure who's talking. out <laughs> my bad. Um, for China, so for China, no, no, and for you, it's like nine a.m. The first match is at really early. I think it goes throughout the day, so I don't think you can watch from 9 to like 2 p.m. or whatever it is. So it's hard to know the viewership um, that they're gaining. I'm not sure what Riot Games is trying to really embrace the Asian market. I know there's shit ton of people there, shit ton of viewers, and they probably make shit ton of money with views. But it is really weird for them to go all all out in Asia when there's such a big community here in NA and EU and the, it, the time difference makes it so hard for us to follow like for me which is passionate about this which I could watch all the matches if I if I could but it's just not possible like I'm not gonna fuck up my 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 sleep schedule just to watch words I probably do if it's the finals but right now it's insane for me it's insane for anyone to watch all the matches so it's it is a strategy decision for real games we were in la then they went to europe it's only normal to go to asia because obviously there's a big community there in asia but when you see the viewership on twitch uh, let me just put my full cam back i don't need this anymore when you see the f the what was i saying when you see the viewership on Twitch, right, um, and Asian, the Asian community, the Asian market doesn't watch streams on on Twitch. I'm not sure what it is. I had a friend from China tell me where they watch their stuff, but it's not primarily Twitch. There's a Chinese stream on Twitch. I'm pretty sure of that with like a Russian one, a French one, an Italian one, a Spanish one, etc. But it is not. On Twitch, and from from what I've seen, I've seen I see everything on Twitch. Obviously, I think that Twitch is the number one. It is the number one, number one market share in the streaming industry. Uh, so that's really what's relevant to me. And the viewership isn't that high, and it kind of worries me a little bit because it is hard. So what I'm trying to say is that it makes Red Game made it hard for us to watch it. Uh, but I feel like it is so important to have a spot on uh, on Twitch when you do an event like this that it's hard for us to like. It, it's hard for me to think about them doing like okay, a lot of Chinese people are gonna watch it, so it'll be good, right? I just don't know. I don't. I don't know about that. I feel like there was not a lot of viewers, and there could be a lot more viewers in NA and EU, and it's just a missed opportunity. Uh, obviously, League of Legends is a sport that is watched everywhere. It's not like American football, where 99% of the viewers are here in the U.S., or soccer, where 90% of the audience is probably in Europe. Uh, 
it is League of Legends where everyone plays it, everyone follows esports, everyone wants to know what's up. And the World Championship brings a lot of teams from all those countries and they all have fans, etc. I, I'm not going to say interest for League of Legends is going down, but I don't want to say it's going up as well. Uh, I'm just saying that Riot Games didn't take, took a decision to really bring the words to um, the Chinese audience. And that's a, that's a decision they made. I just think that it's important for a business to be on top ranks on Twitch. Because this is where the eyeballs are. Uh, all over Europe, all over NA, all over Latin America, etc, etc, etc. Uh, and it's too bad because they're missing out on the opportunity to be really broadcasted everywhere on Twitch. So this is just my opinion. I think it, it, they make it really hard for us to watch it. Um, it is once a year though. It's not like it's not like once every four years, like the Olympics or whatever. It's once every year. So if it's not if if it's in China this year, it's probably going to be an NA next year or uh, in Europe. So it should be easier for us to watch. That's really it. What I have to say for words. I'll do a video after the group stage are over just to tell you what's up. Uh, what comparing to my pick him and we'll see how it goes if you guys have any question feel free to like post them in the link down below after talking about words for 20 minutes guys uh i, I wish i wish it was a little shorter to be honest uh, i want to talk about pubg in a very very short in less than five minutes i promise i want to say that i'm starting to enjoy the game a lot uh and that i finally have a vision of what the battle rally could be I made a really good video, which I'm really proud about, uh, which is, should Riot and Blizzard enter the Battle Royale uh, battle, like the, the market? And some of you had really good answers, some some were really interested about this idea, some were asking me about what I wonder it would look like and make a video about it, and I, frankly, I don't have a lot of ideas. But right now, I'm looking at the top one, the one who is available, the one that is $30, and that's PUBG. And I finally started to play with friends, and I don't know. Playing alone was this, like it was here. Playing with a squad was here. Playing with a squad is so, so, so interesting. And I finally got the good grasp on it. Because, the first of all, I want to say that the knocked out uh, gameplay, um, like gameplay aspect, the fact that if you're in squad, if you kill, if one of your teammates gets killed, he's knocked out and then he's dead. So you have a chance to save him, and saving him takes 10 seconds, and you have to be close to him. Uh, I think this is a, a tremendous mechanics that is super, super, super interesting. Uh, the The game itself is super fun. It's kind of frustrating sometimes to get killed from somewhere you don't even know. But it's the game. It is the game, dude. It is the game. I got killed with a grenade. I don't even know what happened. Like, it, it, some insane stuff happened. I heard there was something as well that the smoke grenade is kind of useless in this game because some people have low graphics. And when you have low graphics, just the grenade isn't even there. Like, or it's like super small. Or it is not hiding anything. Like, you can go through it and the guy with a low setting would just kill you. Which is kind of fucked up when you think about it. But recently, this week, guys... Uh, PUBG was announced as the IEM uh, Oakland featured game. So I went to IEM Oakland last year and it was basically a divided Oracle arena, which is the arena where there's so many concerts, where um, the Warriors play uh, basketball, um, NBA. It is insane. It is insane. It's beautiful and it was split in half. Uh, I think I have a photo on my Instagram if you guys want to follow me. Um, on the right, you have League of Legends. On the right, you have CSGO. Literally, I split into on the right, like you had a big screen here. People were watching CSGO here, and people were watching League of Legends here, and there were like people watching here and people watching here, and the whole middle here was empty. Just empty because Oracle Arena is like 50k people. I don't think they're gonna sell that much tickets. And League of Legends is out. Like, there's no more League of Legends at IEM Oakland. For some reason, there's just none. I believe that it's because there's words and. The words are in China, and it's hard for teams to go again and just, like, be there in uh, SF. It's a lot of traveling. Maybe that could be it. Or maybe it's just that Riot Games doesn't want to license its tournaments or his games or whatever. And was like, okay, uh, ESL, I don't want to work with you anymore. Find another game. CSGO is still on the boat. So they just kicked out. Like, League of Legends doesn't exist anymore in IEM Oakland, but it's just Pug Gino. And when I saw that, I was like, I'm getting my ticket ASAP, bro. I'm getting my tickets ASAP. Because PUBG is finally doing stuff with ESL. And I've been waiting for this for a long time. Is that 
what is PUBG going to do with esports? What is it? What is it? Where is it? How is it? Who's going to play? What are the teams? So they're playing with uh, IEM, Intel Extreme Masters, and I think it's ESL, right? Just running the shit. Uh, and it is super interesting. It's super interesting, and I cannot wait to see it. Two things I'm worried about, though. The first thing is, who are the teams? Like, who are the teams? Like, are we going to see TSM? Are we going to see stuff like this? Are we going to see, like, individual or very new organization um, that were that were birthed with this game, with this industry? And the second is, what is the spectator experience going to be like? And I'm going to go there. I'm probably going to vlog there. And I'm probably going to have myself express uh, my opinion about the spectator experience and what I've experienced there at AM Oakland, if I liked it, if I could see something becoming a thing. Um, but it was it's super interesting and I cannot, cannot, cannot wait. So if you guys are going to AM Oakland, just tweet at me, let me know. Maybe we can do something there. That could be cool. But that is basically it, guys. This podcast is now uh, over. I cannot wait for AM Oakland. Next week, we'll probably talk about more of a PUBG stuff. Um, I don't know, I don't know, next week if you want me to talk about anything, let me know, I'm gonna try again and harder to get a guest, I'm sure I can't do it like this, there's no way, there's no way I can't do it bro, so let's get a guest and let's learn from someone that works in the industry or that, that is doing something in the industry, uh, until then guys, thank you so much for watching this episode, I wish you an amazing week and I'll see you for the next episode guys, cheers.